first of all, uh, welcome to everyone in such large numbers. We've always said in the school that we pick prize giving for the warmest days. I think graduation is now vying for that. So we'll try and get through this uh, and back up to the canteen for tea and coffee as soon as we can. Can I pay a particular thank you to James and James for their excellent speech and reminding us some of the highlights of the past years, uh, or six years in Camelton Grammar. This is certainly a hard act to follow. The class of 2012, your last day at Camelton Grammar, one piece of intensive research undertaken into graduations, you would know, was published last year. And the overwhelming conclusion of that research was this is one of the best days in your life to ask members of your family for money. <laughs> Sorry, folks. It's only right for James and James on your behalf to thank the staff of Calmertown Grammar School for their work, their support, getting on your backs, whatever. They quite rightly mentioned the presence of Mr Crossan and Miss Brown here to be part of this special occasion. There are also a number of other former members of staff here to celebrate this with you. Mrs Gobraith, Mrs Oman and Mr McEwen. Mr Gallagher also mentioned that we also have representatives from our external partners, from our Gale College, Skills Development Scotland, or Careers as I keep calling them, Community Education, KDAS, the School Nurses from the NHS and Social Work Department. I know that you, along with your parents, relatives and friends, will take the opportunity to chat to the staff from all of these organisations over tea and coffee in the canteen after the ceremony. Before we started the ceremony, we were all listening to some of the top musical hits from the past six years. I have to say, well, I did recognise some as well, like Mr Gallagher. But I graduated from school exactly 40 years ago this month. And in 1972, one of the top hits was Schools Out by Alice Cooper. Cooper has said he was inspired to write the song when answering the question, what's the greatest three minutes of your life? And Cooper said, there's two times during the year. One is Christmas morning, when you're just getting ready to open the presents. The next one is the last three minutes of the last day of school, when you're sitting there and it's like a slow fuse burning. He said, if we can catch that three minutes in a song, that it's going to be big. No more pencils, no more books, no more teachers, dirty looks. <laughs> he also sings the school has been blown to pieces. Well, not until the new one is built, please. <laughs> when I say I graduated from school in 1972, there was actually no such thing. In those days, we sat our exams and then still had to attend school until the end of June. Now, there's an idea. <laughs> Maybe not the last day. My last days at school just seemed to fizzle out. <coughs> Numbers attending just dwindled each day with different schoolmates just not coming back into school as the end of term approached. So I hope that you will remember today, from your graduation breakfast this morning to this ceremony this afternoon, there is 100% attendance today, which I think marks the support that you're giving to each other, not just the sixth year, but right through in many cases from primary one, but certainly S1 to S6. Being here as a full year group, to be part of each other's final day, just as you all arrived together on day one in August 2005. James and James singled out some of your individual exploits. Some of these were through inappropriate actions, the right hook, or possibly through some words. But I can do that too. Early one morning in November, I was getting out of bed earlier than usual when Mrs C, awakened by this, said, where are you going at this time? And I, still sweetly, hastily replied, I'm off to see the six-year girls in their pyjamas. <laughs> so 
some of you received very appropriate comments through your nominations for citizenship as detailed by Ms Cameron. These are well deserved. I would also like to pay a special thank you to Alex and Ruth, Fraser and James, Louise and Lindsay for all their extra efforts as captains and vice captains. It was your first time through just like me and I truly valued your support throughout the year. However, I would like to thank all of you for being part of and contributing so much to the school over the past six years. The photographs compiled by Mrs Miller highlighted many such contributions. School events and competitions, school trips, musical events, sport, to your six-year talents this year as buddies, sports leaders, assisting staff, organising dances, your very own successful Charities Day, that was the pyjamas. <laughs> oh, and achieving excellent exam grades on the way. All of these will be memories, I hope happy memories, of your time in Campbelltown Grammar. Many people talk of their graduation as the end, but in reality, it is also the beginning. The present is also the start of the future. But what does the present mean? Surely that just means now, or maybe the last three minutes, as mentioned by Alice Cooper. The present is such a fleeting concept. Everything you have in the present day is a result of everything that you did and happened to you in the past. Everything you will do in the future is a result of not just the past, but also your present actions and decisions. Everything in some way is a present, perhaps a gift, maybe like Cooper awaiting Christmas morning. What were the presents you received as you passed through the school? Teachers guiding, stretching and shaping you. Your family and friends who stuck by you, supported you and loved you and continue to do so. It's worthwhile taking a moment to be thankful for the presents you have received so far. <coughs> it is also the last of this present time in your life and draws to a close your school days. What are your future presents? <coughs> well, if you're sitting there thinking, what does the future hold for me? Then I have to say to you, you're asking the wrong question. President John F. Kennedy, in his inaugural speech, <coughs> after being elected in 1961, said, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. Well, you should go out to be ready, not waiting for the future to shape you, but for you to shape the future. You leave here with many talents. You should be ready to work hard, to make the right choices, and to grasp the opportunities of this rapidly changing world has to offer. You have a head start and you will succeed if you want to. James and James. Is the jar free? Yes. Yes. Is the jar now full? Yes. <laughs> the golf balls are the important things. Your family, your children, your health, your friends. Things that if everything else was lost and only they remained, your life would still be full. The beads are the other things that matter, like your job, your house, your car. The sand 
is everything else. The small elements, having the latest model of mobile phone, another app or download, your dress sense or lack of it, getting tickets for tea in the park in July. However, if you put the sand into the jar first, there is no room for the beads or the golf balls. The same goes for your life. If you spend all your time and energy on the small elements, you will never have room for the things that are important to you. Do not lose sight of the things that are critical to your happiness. The future has lots of presents for you. I and my colleagues wish you long and successful lives, but above all, happy lives. I hope you return one day, hopefully to a new grammar school, not this one in pieces, with your own thoughts to inspire a new generation. The presents are out there for you. Go get them and good luck. Thank you.